day, grade 10s. In this series, we will investigate the nature and properties of sound. But what is sound? Let us join Nelly as she goes to the Cy Bono Discovery Center to do some sound experiments. The first experiment we're going to take a look at involves an apparatus called a sound cannon. When I hit this stretch sheet of rubber, you can clearly hear a sound. Now watch what happens to the metal tags when I point the cannon in this direction. Did you see the metal tags move? This means that the sound produced by the vibrating rubber membrane here is causing a disturbance way over there. Through what is clearly thin air. How is this possible? I'm sure you have some idea as to what the answer to this question is, but let's not jump to hasty conclusions. Let's see if our next experiment can give us some more clues. This experiment involves a bell inside a jar filled with air. When I ring the bell inside the jar, we can all hear it. Now I'm going to remove all the air from the jar using a pump while the bell is ringing. Observe very carefully what happens. Can you see that the bell is still ringing because the hammer is moving, but we can no longer hear it. Why? Well, you could say that sound needs air to move from the bell to our ears. And you would be right. To put it in more scientific terms, we would say sound needs a medium to travel through. A medium is a substance that is made of movable particles, such as the gas particles you find in air, that are constantly moving in a random way. So what does sound do to the particles of the medium that makes it possible for sound to travel? Well, to answer that question, I want you to think about the sound cannon again. That's right. It would have to be pushing the air somehow to make the tags move. Sound is a vibration that starts from a vibrating source and causes the particles in a medium to start vibrating. This vibration then spreads through the medium. The next question I want you to think about is whether air is the only medium through which sound can move. I hope that you said no. The way in which whales and dolphins communicate with each other is a great example of sound moving through water. And if you place a glass onto a wall and then put your ear to it, you can hear the sounds coming from the next room. So, sound can travel through air, water and solid structures. Vibrations from the source of the sound cause the molecules in the different media to vibrate. The gas molecules in the air, liquid water molecules in the ocean, and concrete molecules in the solid phase in the wall. So far, we have established that sound is generated by a vibrating source, and that it moves from the source through a medium by causing the particles of the medium to vibrate. Nelly did two very interesting experiments at the Cy Bono Discovery Center. Let us summarize what we have learned so far. Sound is caused when a source vibrates. These vibrations need a medium to travel through. These vibrations move through the medium in the direction of propagation. This just means that they move in the direction from the source outwards through the medium. 
A medium is a substance that is made up of movable particles. It can be gas, liquid or solid. Great tens, we have identified very important characteristics of sound. In the rest of this series, we will investigate the wave nature of sound and look at how we use sound in modern day life. To find more information about sound, go to our website at www.9z.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye.